Hello, hello, hello. Cheers, Kevin here, and welcome to TIS 100, the assembly game that nobody has asked for. This is going to be a very interesting game. Before you begin, we strongly suggest that you print the TIS 100 reference manual. It's an important part of the TIS experience and is essential to mastering the TIS 100 architecture. If we open up this manual, um, well, you can't see this. Let me go ahead and try and shift my X split over. We can take a look at the desktop, and it opens it up in... Uh, Oh, look at that. There's my face, too. What is my face doing there? My face isn't supposed to be there. Ah, let's get rid of that. Ah, goodbye, my face. Um, yeah, there is a manual here explaining what this computer thingy is, but we're not going to read that because we don't have time for manuals. We are playing a video game, and that's what we are doing right now, right here today. So, we're not going to go ahead and do that. In fact, I've already gone ahead and looked at a little bit of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now, this is going to be confusing. This right here is a list of things that... that are, is broken with this computer. Right now, we have one segment that is available to us. It is the self-test diagnostic. These are some statistics about stuff and things. This is where we can create some programs. This is the segment map, which is the screen that we're currently on. Here is the specification editor, which I have no idea what that does right now, but maybe it's in the manual and I didn't read it. So we're going to go through here. This is a game that is a programming-based game. It's made by the same folks who did like Infinite Factory and a couple of other things. And we're going to go into the self-test diagnostic. Now, I can't double-click into here. I have to create a program because it actually shows it up here because I have this selected. It's like, okay, self-test diagnostic. I'm going to create a new program that uh, where I can do this. And here we go. Here's the self-test diagnostic. That diagnostic. It's telling me what it wants me to do up in this up in this top left. It says it wants me to read a value from in.x. I say, okay, that's up here. Then write that value to out.x. And we see, okay, that's down here. And then also read a value from in.a, so over here, and write the value to out.a, which is down here, out.a. And here we have these little boxes. And this was really confusing to me when I first started looking at this game. These are, you can think of them as kind of little mini computers that are existing inside your big computer. And you write programs that they are going to run in sequence. And that's pretty much it. These are broken computer parts. I don't know. <clears throat> We can go ahead and take a look at this debug. Computer no diagnostic microcore dump. I can't find a pen right now, so I'm just going to take notes here. Looks like sh like short-term storage. Uh, 51079. Got this one at the swap meet today. Fellow wanted 450 for it, but I talked him down to 200. Good deal. No idea who makes this thing. Never heard of the TAS series, and the architecture doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. Ask the guys down at blah, 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 but no joy. Randy has a mystery on his hands. All right, so we're going to try and fix this computer, and to do that, we need to be able to get through these diagnostics. So if I have escape here, I can go back and look at the segment list. Basically, once we complete this, then we should theoretically be able to maybe get some, some more of these segments to work. Right now, these are totally broken. We can't even tell what they are supposed to do. It's just jumbles of text. So we're gonna try and get this self-test diagnostic to work. Here we go, untitled program is not yet solved. Now, there is already some code in here, move up, comma, down. And I'm actually going to take out those commas because they bother me for reasons. Do that. That's also valid syntax. What we have on here on the left is some example inputs that we might get. We might get a 51 as part of the input, and we might get a 68 as part of the input over here for in A. What it expects to get out is 51 and expects to get out 68 and in, and out X and out A respectively. Now, down at the very bottom, we've got a couple of different programs we can stop which is currently stopped, we can step through the program, and I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to click step. Now you see, it says it's running test one, and you can see it's highlighted the current test that it's doing. And you can see that these individual uh, little nodes are going through and trying to, they've highlighted the command they're currently running. So if I step again, now we see up here, this thing has an arrow pointing into it that says 51. It got some input signal. And now, this thing managed to run its command. It managed to move something from up to down. And we can go ahead and watch again. And look there, 51 is all the way down. And then it gets down to the bottom. And then if we go step and look, here we go. It tested that and that's wonderful. Now, of course, it's still in the process already now of already moving 62 down and 16 down and all this wonderful stuff. And if I go ahead and continue to step through, we can see as it cycles these numbers down through this whole procedure, it's actually getting the correct outputs here. This is what we were expected, this is what we got. But there is no out.a response. We're gonna have to fix that. I can also go ahead and run this, and it will go through like this. And there we go, and now it's idling, because it's like, hey, I'm done, except it doesn't know that it's done because it's still waiting for some out a values, and so it's continuing. You can see here, it's doing, it's still running, it's idling 89% of the time, um, 
but that's fine. We'll go ahead and stop. So now what I want to do is I want to write some code. Now, this is a sort of assembly language, which means that you have a very small amount of syntax that, are, that is available. So we can see the example that they gave us was so move up to down. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go instead of going down, though. Well, let's try it. Move up to down. And we'll see what happens. If we step through this, we get 68 going into the NA, and then it moves it down. But nothing ever takes it. And so we can't move stuff down because this thing is a broken. So we can't do it that way. We've got to route it around this broken thing. So I'm going to say move up to the left. And then here I'm going to say move uh, right to down. You can see these have different arrows. Some of them have arrows that point in. Some of them have arrows that point out. Some of them have both. And uh, yeah, we can do that. Whoops, not move. MOV. Move up to down. And now we'll go move up to the right. And then we'll move left to down. And now if we step through this, we can watch those numbers slowly trickling down. Now, the out A is much slower. If you watch on the on the very left of the screen, we're getting we're a little bit laggy there, but that's okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and just run this whole thing. And now our program is working. It's running test one, test two, and test three. And now it's running a test of random values. And there we go. Self-test diagnostic test passed. And we get some cycle count statistics for me. It tells me that, hey, it took us 83 ticks to do that. Um, it took eight nodes, which is the the little the little boxes for us to do that. And we wrote eight instructions to do that. And uh, if this was the sort of thing, I believe if, uh, yeah, it will, it will actually give you a little bit of a distribution if there are people that come up with multiple solutions. And we can see, hey, did I do a better job than the other people? So who knows? Let's return to our segment list because we have now solved this. We got the self-test diagnostic working. We've written the code that fixes this part of this computer. And look at that. Now, this thing is available to us. This is the signal amplifier. And you can see down here, the node count statistics, some people manage to do it with some nodes, some people manage to do it with another node. So, with more. Now, it says read a value from in A, double the value, and write the value to out A. And uh, I'm going to think about this. So, let's see. Well, we've got in A. And I'm going to say, um, we've in addition, so we've, we've moved values, but this time it's asking us to double things. And that's a little bit trickier. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say... Um, Let's see, I'm gonna write three things. I'm gonna say, uh, move up to accumulator. The accumulator is a counter. Each of these little nodes has a counter and we can move stuff into that counter. And I'm gonna say here, add accumulator. Now add is a very interesting thing. Normally when we're thinking about add in math, it would be like add two and three. Like would do something like that. That's not valid though. When you say add, that just says, hey, we, we're going to assume we're adding it to this accumulator value here. Um, and now once that's done, I'm gonna say move, um, yeah, we can say move accumulator to the right. And then I can say move from the left to down and move from up to down and move from up down. Now, of course, these aren't going to be able to do anything until it actually starts getting values, but if we go ahead and run this, we step through, we move, it's not, doesn't have anything, it's waiting for something up, now it sees something up, and now it moves it into the accumulator, we have 66 there, and we add 66, so we get 132, and then we move it along down the line, and there we go. And this is going to take a long time, let's go ahead and run this full thing. And you can see it's cycling through these various steps. The computer just, the, the node just goes through from top to bottom. It took 160 cycles, and it's taken 160 cycles each time. Running random tests. And there we go. And we can see here that uh, we did this with the fewest amount of nodes. Um, and we did that with, uh, let's see, we did four, four, very few instructions, very few nodes. And there we go. I, yep, yeah, we can, there we go. That's That works. Now, one thing that we can do as well, and... Uh, I, I'm not going to claim credit for this because I, I don't deserve it. Um, let's go ahead and return to the segment list. I want to create a different version. I want to see if we can do this a little bit faster. So um, one of the things that we can do is instead of just doing the addition right away, so we can actually split these things off. So instead of doubling it right now, I'm just going to move up to the uh, right. And I'll say move up to down. And now here I will double it and I will send it down to here. And here I will double it and send it over to here. So that, or actually, I think I can do this even, well, we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, move up into accumulator and we'll say add accumulator. And then we'll say move uh, accumulator to the right. 
and let's see here we'll say uh, move right uh, move left to accumulator and accumulator move accum uh, accumulator down and here now I could say I could have this cycle back and forth between looking for something from one and looking for something from the other but I'm not going to do that I'm going to say move from any which is also a valid thing, which will basically say the first person that tries to give me a thing, I'm going to use that. I'm going to say move any down, and then here I'll say move up to down. And let's step through this and see if this works. So first thing it does is it sends, it's going to send something over to the right. There it goes, it sends 66. Next, it's going to send something down. And now these things can operate and do all their junk in parallel. They can do all their doubling, which is going to take a little bit of extra time. And if we run this whole thing, it took, it took 84 cycles. So that's good, right? That's something. 84 cycles, that is not bad. I think though, we might be able to do even better. Um, I wanna try, I'm not, sh I'm not positive about this because unfortunately we can't really branch this off in a super convenient way. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say move up to down and then move up to accumulator. And here, I'm gonna do the same, that's what I'm gonna do here. I wonder if, if this will be fewer cycles. That was 84 cycles, I think. We'll say move any down. I don't know if this is gonna work. We'll have to see. Okay, so we'll just do move up to accumulator, add accumulator, move accumulator to the right. There we go. So we're basically branching. This one is gonna go, sometimes I'm an adder, sometimes I'm just a fetcher. And we'll see if this works. This may save some time, this may not. Who knows? Oh, no, it's exactly 84 cycles. But we ended up using more code, of course, to do it. So probably not the best option. All right, but that's fine. That's okay. We'll go ahead, we'll, we'll remove this whole move up to down thing. And we'll remove these as well. I want to make this, you know, clean and efficient and stuff. Um, one other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to remove both these lines. I'm going to just remove up to any. So I'm going to say, hey, if anybody's listening for stuff, then we'll do that. Because then that's one fewer line of code. And hey, shorter amounts of lines of code, the better that we're doing. And there we go. Look at that. Now we have fewer. Uh, we see somebody's somehow people are managing. To, oh, well, no, we did this with four nodes. Um, let's see. Instruction counts. Some people managed to do this with you. Right. People do it with your instruction, instruction counts, but it was slower. Um, so, OK, there we go. That's pretty good. Let's say let's return to the segment list. Now we have. All right. So we can look and now we can see that we've written actually two versions of the program. One took 160 cycles, used four nodes and six instructions. The other one took 84 cycles, five nodes and nine instructions. And look at that. We've unlocked a whole bunch of additional things. So that's pretty cool. Now, this one's probably going to be complicated. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look. We'll create a program. Read values from in A and in B. Write in A minus in B to out P. Write in B minus in A to out N. All right, so we get A and we want A minus B, right? Yes, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something, okay. Well, let's do the first part of this. So first we need to move up to accumulator. So we're gonna take in the thing, we're gonna put it into our, into our little register that stores a number. Um, and then I'm gonna say, um, subtract right. We're just gonna worry about that part for the moment. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 we're just gonna try and get the out p value. So this first, this first one, we're gonna get that to right. So we're gonna, this will just have to say move up to, uh, to, uh, yeah, let's see, move up to left. That's all it's gonna do. Um, we're gonna subtract the right and then we're gonna move uh, accumulator to down. And then we're just going to do that again. I think, I think that'll work. Yeah, let's, let's step through this. So first we, well, there we go. Now we get our values. We bring that in. We grab negative 49. We move it down and there we go. It goes out. Well, we don't have anything that's moving this stuff around yet. Um, let's go ahead and stop that. So we'll just move, uh, move up to down and move up to down. And we can go ahead and step through this. Do, do, do. And it takes a while but we are getting all of those correct values. The problem is we're not getting any N values and that's no fun. So now we need to worry about how we're gonna do that, huh? Okay, let's see how we do that. Hmm. Um, the problem is we need to save stuff and, or well, we need to split these things off in a way that makes things easy enough to, to do, okay. So, um, let's see. 
If these were in the other order, it, no, it wouldn't matter if they were in the other order. The problem is that they're crossing. We can't just be like, all right, we'll do the subtraction for one over here because we, we need to somehow transfer the things between each other. So what we could do, I think, let's see, move up to accumulator. Let's 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 just let's just pretend that B didn't care about A. So move up to accumulator, sub left, move accumulator accumulator down. We're gonna we're gonna try and try and do this lazily. Move up to down, move up to down. And of course, this is not gonna work at all because they're both gonna be waiting for a message from the other one. Ah, that's not gonna happen. Mm. So what we need to do is instead have them take turns. So. Let's say that A gets to go first, so it'll move the thing in, it'll subtract the thing from the right. Um, let's say move up accumulator. Let's say move up accumulator. And if we move, yeah, okay, so we'll move up to the accumulator and then we'll also move, we'll ignore the subtraction stuff yet. Uh, move accumulator to the right. So we'll, we will move it, but we will also save it. I think, let's see, move up. We're moving it to the right. Nope. Oh, oops, to the right. Oops, I meant to the left. I'm sorry. That's on me. We need to, so we're going to add it to our register and then we're going to save it around. And if we run this, this should still work. Yeah, we're still getting the P values. So that's good at least. And we're saving these values. So if I step through here, we, we get the value, we throw it in. So now it has 93 sitting there and then it puts 93 in there, but it still has 93 over here. So that's pretty cool. Um, now the tricky thing, is that we need to get that A value back out. So that's okay, we'll, we'll figure out how to do that. Now I wanna try, okay, so move up to accumulator. Now I think, what is it, save? Is that valid? There we go. Now it puts us in this backup register. Puts 44 in this backup register. So we can subtract this and we still have that backup thing. So that's cool. And now we can restore it. So we're gonna save it. Now this is not probably the most efficient way to do this because we're just, we're, we're not leveraging these things, but um, I think it's swap. There we go. So once we've gotten rid of it, then we'll swap and then we can move uh, accumulator to the right. So we can say, I'm done. I've got, I've done my math. Now you can do your math. So that's something. Yeah, all right, let's see, move. So we have we have saved our accumulator and now we just need to subtract from the uh, left. And that's it, right? All right, so negative 49, we swap, let's we move it down, then we swap, and then we send it over. And there we go. Oh, whoops, nope. We actually need to get rid of it once we've saved it. Uh, move uh, accumulator down. All right, okay, let's run this and see if that works. Is, is This is slow because these guys are doing an awful lot of work and they're having to toggle back and forth. They're taking turns. If that makes sense. Deciding who gets to look at that. 393 cycles. That is a lot of cycles. That is not an efficient way to do this. We may be able to come back. We should probably be able to come back and find a more efficient way to do this. That is not, that is not responsible. Shame on us. Um, and most of the time, this uh, this one is, yeah, so even looking at this, this is idle. The, they're idle. They're waiting on each other more than they're doing anything else. So that's that's not great. But, all right, there we go. And if we look at the distribution, we are very much on the high end as far as cycle count goes. But, and, no, and we're still using six nodes. Somebody managed to do it with fewer nodes. Interesting. What, huh? Someone managed to do that with five nodes. That's, that's crazy. And our instruction count is not, is not the worst. But yeah, this is not a great one. But let's go ahead and return to our list. Now, look at that. We've got three things that are nominal. Uh, parts of our computer that are good to go. I think we'll go ahead and end it there before we'll jump into some more of these and start fixing this thing up. Actually, one no, one thing I didn't do. Um, some of these have additional things, additional debug things. We didn't look at that. Here we go. 7, 18, and 1979. Continues to baffle. Chatted with Bernie at IBM, and he says it sounds like something that... Uh, <clears throat> they'd want to come up with in the USSR. But then why is the manual in English? All right, so we're learning more about this computer as we debug it. So there is a there's some craziness in the machine. Let's return to the segment list and see if there was anything there. Um, let's see here. Yep, there we go. Communication failure. Uh, 7, 19, 1979. Interesting. It looks like there's, just, there's some kind of static memory in this thing. Encoded something or other. So, all right. Wonderful flavor text. We will have to figure out what is all up with that in uh, future episodes. So I hope to see you then. Cheers.